Welcome to our childbirth video. Uh, this is very, very new for us. This is going to be a very rough, rough video. Not professional at all. Please bear with us. We're going to try to teach you what we feel you should know. And we can't do a class. So, my name is Gwen Starkweather. Um, I've been a nurse for 35 years and 36. I've uh, been teaching classes and doing OB for all of those years. Um, I have a great partner. Her name is Cora Hoverdink, and she's behind the camera today. And we had a little argument on who was going to do the talking and who was going to do the videoing, and I lost. Okay, so I just want to tell you that we feel very fortunate that you're going to be delivering with us. We are striving to make this a comfortable experience and an experience that you will look back on and know that everyone around you was doing their best to make it the best for you as we possibly can. So knowing that, um, we're gonna highlight a few things as we go through our tour, but we're also gonna be walking through the building. So I'm just gonna talk with you as I would any other class and give you um, some of the highlights that we want you to know. So let's start a little bit with COVID. Um, obviously that has changed our world. Um, I find that I'm hearing questions and things like that or I read things on Facebook and a lot of it is um, put out by people who maybe are doing things differently somewhere else or that type of thing. I would really love to direct you to the Orange City Area Health System Facebook web Facebook site. Our Facebook site is being updated often, and um, we are interviewing people on there. We're, we're talking through to healthcare providers like community health partners. Our uh, administrator, Marty, Marty, is talking a lot on that. And basically, you'll get the lowdown of what's happening in our area. What are we seeing for patients? How many are we testing? That type of thing. So I really want to make sure you are aware of that site. The other thing I want to know, make sure you know about is the rules and regulations that we're following right now for COVID um, are different than what we are hopefully going to have when you guys deliver. So I'm going to tell you the rules right now as they stand today. And you can watch the Facebook site and ask your provider when you have appointments, what are the rules now? So as of now, the rules are that we are allowing one support person to come with the patient in labor and they may stay with that person the entire time that they are here. So when you come into labor, you would get screened with the usual temperature and asking you questions like, have you had a fever? Have you had any respiratory symptoms of illness and your support person will also be screened. After you are screened, then you'll come into labor and at that point, you'll stay in that OB unit the whole entire time. That means if, if you have a support person that is here with you, they are not allowed to leave and go to work and then come back or leave and go to a store and come back. They are here in the unit with you the entire time. Um, and we are seeing some people decide to keep their visits shorter. They may go home in a day rather than staying two days. We're not mandating that, that's totally up to you. We're trying to keep you guys as safe as you can and we're trying to keep our staff safe also. So I also want to make sure that you are aware and that you know that we are doing our best to keep our social distancing. We're doing all the things that I've asked are asked of us, and we ask and we plead with you, we implore you to do the same as pregnant people out there. Please just take care of yourselves and social distance so that you don't pick it up and bring it into the hospital to us. So, knowing that, let's talk now from now on as if we are in normal times and I'm gonna tell you what to do. So, when you think you're in labor, I want you to call the hospital, 737-4984, day or night, and that is answered by different people according to what time of day it is. So, if it's the nighttime, 
then you'll have a nurse answer it. If it's the daytime, you'll have a secretary answer it. And all you have to do is say, I need a labor nurse. I need to talk to somebody in OB. And that person will talk with you, find out what your symptoms are, find out how far apart your contractions are, find out you know, if your water broken, and they'll direct you to come into the hospital unless you have questions and you're thinking, I can stay home for a while, they'll, they'll talk you through that. When you do come in, I want you to come in through the emergency entrance, and that's the area of the hospital where we're in front of right now. So we're on the south side. This is not the clinic parking lot. This is the back of the hospital. So you would enter here. There's a push button on the wall that you push the button if the door doesn't open by itself. If it's locked during the night, you can still get a hold of us by pushing the button on the wall. Okay, so if you push the button and the nurse comes in and answers it, then they will help you get into the OB unit. If it's during the daytime, from like 7.30 in the morning until 9 at night, we ask you to register at the emergency desk. Even though it says emergency, that is our general check-in spot for anyone coming into this area of the hospital. Okay? so. Once we come and pick you up from here, they'll call us, we'll get, a nurse will come and find you here. Then we're gonna go into the birth unit, okay? So let's just go on to that area. med search nurse's station. This is your first point of contact with our unit. This is a unit coordinator or a nurse will be sitting here. This is where your vis visitors will check in also because OB is a locked unit and so this is where they will allow you to come in or not. So if you have concerns about certain visitors that you do not want to visit, if you want confidentiality and nobody to see you, you let your nurse know, and this person is the one that will not allow them in, okay? So, we'll go on to OB now. Here we are at the birth center locked doors. We're gonna go on in. is going we're going to be showing you rooms here and it's kind of backwards because these are the postpartum rooms for after delivery but we're going to walk over to the labor side and show you the labor rooms and then just know that we have rooms all around here that are for postpartum moms and babies okay so we're going to walk to the labor room and as we do that you'll see this is the nurse's station for the OB nurses and you will also see there's nobody sitting here right now. Those nurses, basically, they're a one-man show. They take care of moms and babies. They, we don't have anyone sitting here that's a secretary, or we don't have nurses' aides. We take care of moms and babies. We answer the phones. We do the cleaning. We do, we do a lot of as your OB nurse. But just know that we, we do assign um, one or two moms and babies to a nurse. We never go three moms and babies. So we try to keep it where we give, them, give you very good staffing, okay? So this is where they sit. And we'll go right through into here and we're gonna cut through to a labor room. So we have three labor rooms, and those are where you labor and deliver and stay for two hours after delivery. 
So we're going to go on into one of those rooms and we'll talk some more. All right, so you can see that this room has your basics of the monitor um, that listens to your baby's heartbeat. And so that's where that is. And the, the screens for the nurse to be watching your baby's um, heart rate, your labor bed that comes all apart and comes into different positions. And you'll see that on all the videos. Those look the same as they do anywhere. Um, and then we have the dad's couch. And this couch is in all of our rooms. So in order for the dad to have a little more room to sleep, you just pull it out. It's, it's really pretty comfortable and even a tall dad would fit on it. It's not plush, but it's very cleanable, which we're very happy about. There's no fabric, it's all plastic, which is good for cleaning. And dads are always welcome, obviously. Um, and then our bathroom to help you with your labor pain is one of our nice upgrades. We have a very large whirlpool tub for mom to really get in and she can get on all fours and get her abdomen soaking down into that, that tub, put a lot of water in there and hydrotherapy will really help relieve a lot of that labor pain. And of course, um, there's some you know supplies for mom's pads and things like that in the labor room bathroom also. So you're only in this room for about, well, the, the whole labor and then for two hours postpartum. Um, and that two hours is important for us to talk about. Um, let's start with how do you know you're in labor? Um, I hope that you're going to read your book. I hope you're going to watch all the little snippets of video that will help you um, to know. But I think some of the biggest questions that we often get is how do I know when to come to the hospital? And in your book, it talks about the 511 rule. That means your contractions should be five minutes apart, lasting one minute long, and maybe have them at least have that for at least an hour. So five minutes apart for the last hour, and they're lasting at least a minute long. Okay, five, one, one. Um, that being said, if your water breaks, we want you here sooner. If you have leaking and you think it's your water, we need to see you. We need to have that evaluated. Or if you're having such strong contractions that you really can't talk through them, you're very anxious, you just don't feel comfortable staying home anymore, then we sure do want to see you before the 511, all right? I know I was reading a lot of things in larger hospitals and city hospitals. They don't keep their patients until they're in active labor. And active labor, if you've already learned your phases of labor and from your book, active labor is six centimeters. Um, and so many people are sent home um, because they're not six centimeters or more. Uh, I can assure you we really don't have that rule here. If people are in making progress and their labor is in a steady pattern, and even if they're in early or latent phase of their labor, we will keep them here, especially when they're most comfortable in that way. If you want to go home for a while because you're only two centimeters and you're kind of staying that way, or if your physician really suggests, you know, hey, you know, you could probably do this for the next 24 hours, then we'll let you go home. And don't feel bad if we evaluate you and, you, and send you home. But in general, once you're making progress and your cervix is advancing and your contractions are closer than five minutes um, apart, then we usually will say, yep, now is the, the real time for labor. Okay, so and I do, we get that question quite a bit and we really ask for you to call us and let us know that you're coming. It helps us as a smaller unit to know how to staff appropriately. We'll get people ready um, that maybe are on call to come on in. We want to know that you're coming in. So just call us at that number I talked about. It's 712-737-4984. Okay. And Let's talk about dads or your support person. If you choose to have your mom as your support person, that's fine. If you choose to have your dad or your husband, in the COVID time, it's only one person. Um, during other times, we, we don't limit it. We let you decide how many people you want in the labor room with you. 
but I will tell you that we kind of we try to keep things manageable um, and we try to have support people basically on this side of the room when it comes to labor if you have two people that's fine if you have maybe three but more than that it gets to be a little bit too many people in the room and then the nurse will be on that side and and all of our cabinets have all our supplies and things that we need so um, once you've delivered and you have that support person in here with you or one or two people in here with you we ask that you not have more visitors until that two hour mark um, it's a general time where in the medical world that two hours postpartum is called the acute phase and that's when we can you have the most bleeding um, we do a lot of massage on your uterus to make sure that you stay firm and that you're not bleeding too much your IV will be going will really um, push and ask and encourage and help you with breastfeeding and skin to skin so baby will be right up on your chest that keeps the baby warmer the baby will learn to nurse during that time and we don't want a bunch of visitors during that time it's important for just that baby to learn you and your partners smell taste feel um, and and learn about you guys in that two hours after that we will take you in and put you in a wheelchair and bring you down to a postpartum room and the postpartum room is where you recover the rest of the time you're here whether that be one or two more days all right so that being said, let's go look at what the postpartum room looks like so you um, know what to expect for that room. All right, let's go on over there. This side of the hallway that have the postpartum baths the, the tub is smaller than a labor one but it's still very um, soothing on a sore bottom and the rooms on this side on the other side of the hallway they have just the showers and so um, we will use those if if a person has a c-section where they don't they are not allowed to sit in a tub or we often will we'll use those rooms if we have these three filled and there are a certain amount of people that just really don't care about the bath and they'll use the spray handle to soothe their bottom as well. So let's go on into a postpartum room. Okay. So there will, we'll give you a little paper sign here that, that says that mom's feeding or mom's resting. And so you have control of your room as far as if you don't want interruptions. But you can also just really speak with your RN taking care of you and so she'll know when you're busy and when you're not but we try to keep your interruptions to a minimum so we have all the same furniture in here and I want to point out these rooms are smaller um, and we do we do not have a closet in here for you to hang things or a big suitcase probably doesn't fit real well but we encourage you to put the bags that you have purses camera things up in here if you want um, there's also some hooks on, on the wall behind the door for you to hang a coat or that type of thing. And the bathrooms are pretty much the same as the labor rooms, except the bath is, the tub is smaller. All right. And it has a shower hose and a regular bathtub, in it, but it has the jets. All right. So let's talk about what to bring to the hospital with you. Um, I want to make sure that you bring something to walk in in the hallways on your feet so bring comfortable clothes uh, whether that's a robe or athletic wear or whatever um, and then some tennis shoes or slip-on sandals or slippers or something because in the beginning of labor we'll really encourage you to be in the halls and walking or even up in the room and walking but make sure you bring comfortable clothes <clears throat> We want you to bring the car seat for the baby and we want you to have the car seat base already installed in your car. We make sure we want you to make sure to have read your manual 
on your car seat and read, read the manual for your actual car so you know how to install your seat. Um, every seat is different, every car is different, so you need to be doing that now so you understand your car seat and the belt system in your car. So bring your car seat, bring your checkbook. Your checkbook um, is needed for when you're paying for the birth certificate for your infant. That, that check gets sent up to the Iowa Department of Public Health um, and your birth certificate will come to you in the mail if you pay by check. Um, and we'll explain all those things, but not very many people travel with their checkbook anymore. So just put that in your purse, okay? Um, the other thing, oh, let's talk about breast pumps. Um, if you have insurance, most likely your insurance will pay for you to have your own breast pump, electric breast pump. So ask your physician on one of these upcoming visits if they would please write you a per prescription for that. And you can go to a medical equipment company and pick up your um, breast pump. Uh, and you don't have to bring it with you to the hospital, but if you want to, we can help you learn how to use that. Okay, so that's another thing to think about before you come into labor. The last thing I wanna make sure that you understand is that our support people, the dads, they eat free the whole time they're here. So we have room service, so we have a menu and you just call down your order to the dining services and they will bring up the food to you and your um, partner for all your food needs while you're here. And then let's show you the kitchen at the kitchen area and waiting room. So you'll be familiar with our, your little kitchen area here. Um, kind of like a hotel where you can help yourself to the water and the, the soda and the juice and make some toast or pop some popcorn or whatever. Um, so I'll show you that. You can follow me and we will be right here. All right, so this is just a little waiting area. We will send your family out here if you are busy and ask them to wait out here until you're ready to see them. Or you can take people out here and visit out here if you would like. This is um, the things that are available for you to use. We've got the fridge and freezer, and I'm not gonna show you all the food, but we just really welcome you to help yourself and make yourself feel welcome. This is your, your home away from home. So, Cora, do you have anything to add to our video today? Uh, she's shaking her head no. And I think we've covered all our points. So um, we want to encourage you to watch this video, watch the other videos that we will attach, and just call us or email us with any questions that you have. Thank you, and stay healthy, and God bless.